In this video clip, we're going to show you how to vis use Visual Studio 2010 uh, and then use the calendar control that comes with it in the toolbox. So I'll create a new website and we'll make sure it's C Sharp, version for the framework, empty website. And I'll call this uh, example 7, I think, EX, oops, EX07. All right, click OK. And I already have this form developed, so I'm just going to copy it in there and then I'll explain it. So I have this calendar form that we've already done here. So I'll copy this and right click over here and paste it in. What you could do if you're starting from scratch, where's my paste, there it is, is all you would have to do is be right click, do a new item, and then when it comes up the new item, instead of default, just call it calendar.aspx and you'll get the same thing I have. So what have I done? If I open up calendar ASPX, <clears throat> let's take a look at what we have here. So over on the toolbox, you'll find the calendar control near the top. Let's bring this over. So I use the calendar control and just drag it over. And once I brought it over like that, you can use the smart tag to auto format, right? And you can change, you know, the uh, to the type of uh, style you like. And you can do this in much greater detail. These are just quick and dirty ways to style your calendar. But notice with the, the notice the functionality you get right away, and that you get a, a full blown calendar here. And all you had to do was basically drag over. Let me just drag it over so you can see what happens when you first do it. That's it. And you get all that functionality. And then when you use the auto format control, it puts in the border style, the font size, the width, the, the styles for the headers and the and select the day styles and titles and all that. So it does that for you. Right. So uh, you can give that a try. So what I've done is I've got the um, I added the text inside the title tag, created the um, uh, modified the form ID, the form calendar. And drag this over and then once I did the uh, design with the smart tag it created all this other code for me so the objective here is to show you how you could use the calendar to do some date math right so in in, in C sharp and vision and dot net we have a data type of date all right so we want to be able to convert um, uh, dates and do some date math you know how many what's the uh, you know, how many days are between this date and this date so we're going to use radio buttons to do that as well so what I've got then is I put a BR tag in there, I added some text, and then I took a radio, put brought over a radio button right here from, and just dragged that over. I renamed it to RB Begin. I made it checked equal true, type that in, so that when the form first displays, it's already been checked, right? So what is a radio button? So what's it look like? It's this right here, right? Let me just, let's just preview this so you can see how it works, and I'll go back and explain the code. So again, you could do Control F5 or click on your icon to preview in browser. It brings it up, and if you can see what we're trying to accomplish, we'll see. So here's my ready button. So by by making that checked, when the form first displays, it's already checked. Notice too that um, let me just go back to the code just a second. That we also need a group name with our radio with our radio buttons. Uh, otherwise, it, you know they're not. You could check both of them, so we don't want that. It would act like a checkbox. So by my making these part of the same group, then when I click on one, the other uh, is not selected. So now if I click on end date, right, begin date, it's not selected anymore. So you have to have that group name in there to make that work. So the idea here is I want to be able to click on a begin date, say the 15th or something, click on a calendar and have that, put that date into a label, click on the end date, put that date into a label, and uh, I'll be able to, to compute the current month, figure out what the current month is. Right, and then when I click on the compute, it'll tell me the difference between the two days, 14 days. I could also go here to March, right? Maybe I want the end date to be March 16th, and I could say compute the month or compute the days, 30 days. So let's just see how we, you know, how this would work. All right, so let's go back to it. So again, I added a radio button, and then I added a label beneath it, so that when I select begin and click on the calendar the begin date will go in here. Now, at first I call this selected date, right? So uh, you might want to rename this to begin date if you want, but throughout this example, it's called selected date, all right? And then I uh, did another BR tag, so it would go on the next line. And then I put the word end date, added another radio button and another label. And then we have our days label. So I just put a little label there, days, and then we brought over another label, right? And called it label days, all right? 
Make sure too that for your begin date and your end date, that there's no, um, like you'll, you'll see a, a text when you first do it, a text property, right? Make sure that there's no, oh, here it is right here. Make sure it's empty, an empty string. There's nothing in there, all right? Otherwise, what we're gonna do may not work. Current month, if you wanna find the current month, so I created a label for that, right? And then label, label message if we wanna display any errors. And then we dragged over a button. Right, so I found a button up here on the on the toolbox, and dragged that over, and uh, and then when I did that, I double clicked on the button to get into the click event. Right, that's one way to get to the click event, and then I wrote this code in here, which we'll go over. So let's take a look. So um, we have an event for the uh, event handler for the calendar, and that's the uh, selection changed event. So what's if I go back to uh, let's go back down here. I'm losing my uh, thing here because I can't see where I'm at. So if I go back to uh, calendar, right, and if I double click on the calendar itself, that's what puts me into the selection changed event. Another way again to get into the events is over here on the uh, properties or tool, um, yeah, properties window. You'll see this little icon here, the lightning bolt, and that shows you the events for each control, right? So if I click on the radio button, uh, well, this is the label. If I click on the radio button, it shows me the events there as well. The bolt the lightning bolt does not appear. You might have to click on the design tab and then come back to the source, or vice versa. Sometimes it doesn't show, it doesn't render right away. So let's take a look. So there's my uh, that's all my HTML. Now in my style in my uh, C sharp page, right, which you could also get to by just double clicking here, and it brings you right into it. Nothing's happening on the page load. However, when I click on a date, I want to you know, I want to set up the. Uh, uh, you know, put it into the current, um, current the right label. I can't talk today. So if if the radio button begin uh, right is checked, then I want the label for selected date, which maybe should really be the begin date. I want that to say, you know, show me the date, and I want to format it into. Uh, there's different ways you could do this. I could just type in again. The tell sense is very important here. Just type a, a period, and you can see. Well, what? How do you want it to displayed? Right, so you have to convert it to string. I could string long date, or I could do time. Uh, so I did a short uh, date string, right? But if you don't, if you leave it blank, then you'll just get the date and time, and you can play around with that, right? So uh, if you want long date, you can do the long date. So I'll do short date, right? And then semicolon. Same thing if the ending. Um, well, I forgot my braces. Print prints, and then if if the uh, end date or the radio button for the uh, end date is checked, then when I click on the calendar, it'll go into that label, right? And one of the things we wanted to do was make sure that the beginning date was not greater than the end date. So we did a little if statement here that said, if the selected date, which we're calling the beginning date, is if the length of that text box, or length of that text is greater than zero, and the length of the end date is greater than zero, then we want to do a date check, right? We created our own event handler, we call it a day check. We just type this in. We so this is this code here. We actually typed in the other was event handlers were generated for us. So we just started typing in uh, protected void and we typed this part in. And we have to convert whatever's in the label to a data type of date time. So convert dot to date time right, and then we put that in parens. And so if if the selected date or begin date is greater than the end date, then we're saying in the label message we're saying. Begin date cannot be greater than the end date. So that's going to display on the screen. Now here's the code for the button click. So when we click on the button, here's what happens. We create uh, we create a variable called begin date. I prefix it with the type of data type it is, like DTE for date. Uh, old habits die hard. So I have uh, two dates, two date variables, begin date and end date. And what I do is I take the date, or the, the data that's in the labels, and I have to convert that now to a type of date, right, or date time, actually, because it ha we have to have the same data type if we're going to do any date math, right? So we convert that. And then there's another data type called time span, and I create a variable called DTE date difference. And then I do the math. Date difference equals the ending date minus the beginning date, because we're all, now it's all the same data type, basically. Time span and date time, pretty much the same. It's still date, data type. And then once I have that difference, then I display that in the uh, label message. Now I could display 
I could compute, if I could do date diff dot, and you could see what I have days. I could compute the difference in seconds. How many minutes is it between this date and that date? How many milliseconds is it? How many hours is it? Right? You have many options here that you can choose from. I chose days. Okay. So the date difference. So because it's a of the time span, you can choose that with the IntelliSense. And so that's what gets it to work. So I save it, come out here to the browser, and refresh again if I want to. And let's just try the error message and see. Well, let's, let's bring it up. Um, let's bring it up fresh. I'll close this all out. Come out here, do Control F5 or preview in the browser. Either one works. Let's try the error first to make sure that works. So for begin date, let's just say I select the uh, 23rd. And the end date, let's say I go back here and I'll select the 9th. Let's click on the 9th. And that says begin date cannot be greater than end date. So now let's go back. Let's go over here to, I don't know, 24th. Now if I cl click compute date, it tells me. All right, so that's a brief overview of the calendar control and how you can use it.